Because this one's not bad. Yeah, but flavored it. One minute? Oh, yeah, that one. My soul's opening. I kind of served another one. Don't do that. I'm going to do our ending. You don't have to. Someone will take two. He'll take two. I'm just kidding. No. You want me to take one? So let me tell you a story. Someone that told me to take one. I'll take one right now. There you go. So there's like when we're at the West Covina Apartments doing the podcast, one of them, like obviously we're back then, like just drinking more. Okay. And I got her to take a shot and she did it. I swear to God, in the video, she was on site. Stop! Swear. <laughs> so, yeah. From one shot? She's like, I don't know how to take it. I was like, fool, you always supposed to be taking shots. She's she like, did it me. and she was like, Ugh. and I was oh like, oh my God. I'm fucking shocking the fuck up. I'm dead. Me too. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> if you're tuning in, once again, thank you. Make sure you subscribe, follow Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, TikTok, IG. We're sitting here with a very powerful individual. She just sold out, right? Almost, almost selling out mm -hmm. in her, her launch just happened. But we're sitting here with someone that is creating a movement, doing the damn thing. Not She didn't just dream about it. She's actually doing it. But we're sitting here with Justine in the house, baby. <laughs> I was trying to. Hi guys. How you doing? I'm great. Oh man, I'm glad we finally made this happen. I know. You're I've been watching you guys. You're trending right now. Oh my goodness! Stop. You are. Let, let's get right into it. You're the owner of Empower Fitness, mm -hmm. right? You're a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. You know, doing your thing. How, how did you even start your brand? Let's start there. Let's. So we warm up the motor right now. Mm -hmm. How'd you start off your brand? Where did Empower Fitness come out come from? And why, how are you here? So Empower Fitness actually came from... So I've been training for like, what, three years now? Um, and I just felt like... Honestly, it was kind of... It was really scary at the beginning because I almost felt like I couldn't even start selling clothes yet I felt like I wasn't like I didn't even deserve to be able to sell clothes when I started like gym yeah. clothes um so I started with fitness accessories and the bands yeah I yeah glute bands yeah, yeah I remember. those were popping like during quarantine <laughs> we did we didn't even we did custom off the bat custom so those sold out and then I was like you know what I I feel like I feel like I can't like that gave me the the push that I really needed. Plus, the people around me also really inspired me and and sh and instilled that like, look what you've already done. Like, that's just the beginning. Yeah. So that's kind of how that started. But yeah, it started out with just bands and merch, and that's yeah. So I w everybody that starts off with something, right? Like they start off with with either merchandise. They start off with a product. People intend to die out. Mm -hmm. They go hard, they sell out, and then they don't know how to follow up, or they're just like, ah, oh, you know what, I'm gonna wait on something else is gonna come up. Yeah. How did you say, I'm gonna take this to the next level? Create your complete brand. Like you had the bands already, but now it's like you have your your little shop, mm -hmm. your sign, you have your community, you have people that post you, repost you, share you. How did that, what was that mentality that got you from point A to now where you're at now? I think um, from the beginning when I first dropped, like, the bands and the merch, like, I saw there was, even if it was just one, two people, like, there were people that really supported me, and it didn't matter what I was going to drop. They were going to buy it just to support me. So I feel like that really motivated me because I was like, wow, these people really believe in me. Like, they're really out here supporting me. Like, how am I just going to stop? Like, I can't. I can't stop. Yeah. Did, did you doubt yourself during, throughout that moment, throughout that journey? 
Um, at the beginning, I don't want to say I doubted myself. I've never really doubted myself. Ooh. I just... Talk heavy. <laughs> Talk heavy. I just... It's just risks. You're just taking risks. So obviously with risk comes, like, you get scared. Yeah. You know? But I, I love taking risks, and I love betting on myself. So, so now let's take it back. The young Justine. Has this has that o- has this always been you? <laughs> yeah, we're crying. We're crying. No, we're not crying. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, yes. Ooh. Okay, so when I was I, th- I think I was fourteen. I started selling magazine clips. I would cut out magazine clips. Say like Justin Bieber when he was like very starting out. Right, I'd take all the posters the out of magazines. And any article that had to do with Justin Bieber, for example. You're a believer? I was a believer. Believer with a B. Oh, believer. <laughs> My bad. My bad. Yeah. Um, and I would put them all together, and I would sell them on eBay. So... My dad was like, what are you doing? When I first did it, I was, I was using my mom's phone to take pictures. And then I sold, I sold, um, I think I did like five different like celebrities and I sold them on eBay for like $30 for a package of their posters. And then my dad was like, whoa. And That's so he something. bought me a camera and he was like, all right, now you gotta, now you gotta really do it. Cause now I'm going to buy you a camera. Mm-hmm. And I, that motivated me so much to know that like, now my dad like believes so- in me. He bought me a camera. And I, I would, I was selling magazine clips on eBay when I was fourteen. <laughs> God damn. Yeah. Oh, so you, you had the hustle, y- young. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Where you? What city did you grow up in? Rancho Cucamonga. In Rancho Cucamonga with Day Day. Yeah. Hell yeah! <laughs> if you watch Friday, you know, you know that hint. So from there, getting into high school, right? Because so the whole point of this podcast is talking about your journey, right? Mm -hmm. Your ending is amazing. When your journey that you're in right now that everybody is watching, it's completely amazing. It's inspiring. It's powerful. But to get to that point, people don't understand that, yo, it hasn't always been glitz and glamour. Mm -hmm. It hasn't always been the result that we wanted. And on the way here, I was thinking about it. Like, when you take a chance, you think you're going to get the return that you wanted and imagine just like that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that return, that that you get back, it's not the what you wanted. If you're selling merch, you're mer- you think you're going to sell out, maybe you sold 10 items out of 100. If you start social media, you think you're going to get 1,000 views and you get 10 views. Mm-hmm. That mist of, should I keep going? Mm-hmm. Did you have that in you? Like, damn. Did you have like that moment where you're like, fuck? Yes. Um, but honestly, I just see everything as like, okay, I have to, like, I have to prove myself. So there's obviously always, like, I've had launches where, like, we don't sell out, and I sell, like, half, or if that. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? Like, I haven't, obviously, like, now I didn't make this money back, so, yeah. you know, it's obviously, it's really scary, but I think I've always just tried to take those losses as, like, a lesson, like, okay, now what do I need to do better for the next time so that this doesn't happen again? What do, what do you think is a requirement to be this type of entrepreneur? Not I'm, We're not going to label you as a female or man entrepreneur. As mm-hmm. an entrepreneur in general, mm-hmm. there's a certain thing that you need to have in order to get to this. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you think is that requirement that for the people listening in, whether it's your followers, our followers, the communities that are right now, like, in the midst? Because like, when you become a trainer, right, you go into fitness, your mm-hmm. idea is I'm going to start a brand. I'm going to get shirts out. I'm going to I'm gonna start this big old brand. And then it gets down to it. Yeah. You have the idea, but you no one ever follows through. You did it. You're doing the damn thing. So what is that, like, piece of advice that you got or that you remember that got you here? So I think when I first started at least, like, training, because that's different. The training is completely different yeah. than what I am also doing now with Empowered Fitness, but when I very first started training, that was probably even harder for me to go from working, like, a, a corporate job. I was working at 24-Hour Fitness, mm. and to, to leave that corporate job and take a risk on myself. And I think the fact that I was able to grow as a trainer, like, and I made it work 
and I put myself in a better position than when I was working a corporate job, yeah. I think that really helped my confidence in myself a lot. And I was like, okay, if I could do that, what more can I do? Mm. So I think that's really just what it is. Like, you have to bet on yourself. Like, a lot of people around me as well, and in every everybody has people in their circle that are going to tell you, like, I don't think you should do that. Oh, maybe, maybe you should maybe you should go this route or maybe not yet, but it's like, it's always going to be not yet. And not everybody is going to have that same mindset that you have or that same hunger that you have. If that's starting a business, if that's leaving, you know, a job, even anything like if you believe that you can do something and you can start something, then you need to do that and not worry about what anybody says around you, whether that's your mom, your dad, your best friend, your sibling, anything, like, go all in, like, all bets on yourself. I like that one. I like that one. That's, I already know that's a TikTok. Yeah. That's going to be the TikTok clip right there. So taking it slightly back to your parents, you mentioned your dad believed in you, bought you a camera. You growing up, how was, how was that relationship with your parents? Because from, I think from what I know, your parents are, are successful. They do the work, right? Your dad believed in you back then. So you, if your dad owns a business, mm -hmm. ooh, yeah. Did it, so do you think that get passed down to you? Not not the business but the mm -hmm. business mindset. Mm -hmm. For sure, like one hundred percent. Yeah. Um, my dad, I know my parents. I know. I don't want to talk about anybody else. Well, me, my parents have very <laughs> like they've been so supportive of what. Because I don't want to say, like, oh, a lot of people's, but I don't, I don't know other people's, like, situations. But yeah. my parents, I'm lucky that my parents were very supportive from day one of whatever I wanted to do. They were going to support that. And they have. And if that's, like, I didn't go to college. <gasps> and I didn't get, what? yeah, I know. <laughs> Damn, and I, not I didn't, studious. My parents not never studious. once told me, like, you have to go to college. Like, what? Like, what do you mean you don't want to go to college? But they were, okay, so what do you want to do then? Yeah. And whatever that is, they've always been so supportive of me. And my dad, my dad's more, he's more hard on me rather than, like, encouraging. Okay, so explain <laughs> that. Explain that to to the people listening. Because, again, we all go through ideas, right? You mentioned a perfect thing. You're, they didn't force you to go to college. Mm -hmm. Coming from a Hispanic community, go to fucking college. Go get your degree, become a lawyer, a doctor, whatever it is, but mm -hmm. go get your degree. Some people don't even use their fucking degree. Mm -hmm. No shots to anybody that got the degree. <laughs> Hopefully you guys continue in that, whatever else you're going to do. Yeah, do you. <laughs> do you, boo. You good? But, you know, I, I got that, like, hey, go to I got it from one parent to go to college, and my other parent, because he has a business, he was like, ¿Vas a trabajar o qué? I was like, damn. I was like, yeah, yeah, I got this. Mm -hmm. But... That for you, like, what did that put? What kind of was there pressure on you? Was it like a drive that you had that it gave you to like I gotta do something? You didn't even know what you were gonna do yet, but like that you had to do something. Mm -hmm. Um, no, because if I if I wanted to go to college, he would have supported me. Also, did you want to go to college? No, I didn't. <laughs> you weren't a scholar. No, I didn't. My my um my <laughs> my high school diploma was just fine. <laughs> He doesn't have his high school diploma yet. Cut that out. <laughs> I didn't go pick that, that shit up. Like that shit's still in the fucking front office. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. See, tell me who you're with. I'll tell you but, who you are. Yeah. Right? <laughs> fucking guy out here. Um, sorry. <laughs> lost my train of thought. But you go. So you don't go to college. Your parents support you. Whatever you're going to do. What is your meaning behind this then? Because that was one of the questions that your, your fans were asking, your, your community that asked, what is the meaning and the purpose behind Empower Fitness? Mm. Um, it's more, it's really just community. Like, I feel like my community, I really, I even remember a lot of the people. Like, I know them. Girls who, we message each other on Instagram, and I remember them, and I remember, like, certain things that they'll tell me that they're going through, and I'll ask them about those things, and, because I, I really 
I really care because these people support me and I want them to know that I support them also. So I try my best to respond to every message I get, whether that's on my personal page or in my Empowered Fitness page. I run that page also because I don't want to feel anybody to feel like I didn't see their message. And sometimes I will miss something and I'll even message them and be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I missed your message. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, because it's just community is everything. It's more so, there's so many... There's so many brands out there that people want to feel like they know you, and they, they should. They want to be a part of Why you. Why should I support you Yeah. when I could be supporting X amount of other companies? Why yeah. you? Yeah, because you have those big-name brands, and they're super dope, right? Every, everybody wants to just wear it because they're super dope. But when they mess with, say, a, a brand like yours or personal training groups like yours, they just want to have a piece of you and be like, yo, I represent this. I do this too. Like I'm a part of whatever that community is. I feel this type of way. So I, if everybody's following you and seeing your videos, they see you're pretty dorky in the gym. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Your TikToks are pretty, but I think your friend is like six, seven. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Carla. <laughs> Bro, I was like, damn, yeah. she's, she's an NBA player yeah, right there. There's no, like there's no chill between us. So, or height. <laughs> so talk about that. Talk about being authentically yourself on your social media. Yeah. That's a big thing. Yeah. Very, very big. Because, again, there's so many people that see content creators and they make accounts. And it's just all about, because there's so many accounts and people out there trying to be successful content creators. We that just said like this right now, right? You, It's like you have to just be yourself. And, like, your tribe, your community of girls or guys. They will find you because a lot of people are just trying to be what people what they think people want to see. But it's not about that. People want to see, there's certain people that want to see you, and they're gonna find you if you do that. But if you're constantly trying to do what the next person is doing or get people to like you, you're they're not like people notice that also when you're not being authentic. And they're gonna be like, but yesterday this girl was saying this. Or she was acting this way. Why is this way? Like, no. Uh, you're always going to get me. Yeah, I'm really goofy. <laughs> I'm very. I'll be in the gym, like, acting a fool sometimes. And acting, like, just like a goofball. And I'm just, I look over at Jose and I'm like, this is my boyfriend. And I'm just in the gym over here <laughs> acting like a weirdo. <laughs> He's just I'm like, like what damn, is he? Yeah. I'm really with her, huh? Yeah. That's what, it, that's what goes through my head sometimes <laughs> while I'm filming these dumb videos. Like, I look like I'm just a goofball. But. My people, they find me. So, so yeah. being authentically yourself, do you think that comes with repercussions? I mean, no. No, because I'm. there might be people that don't want to follow me, I guess. you could, But that's not a repercussion because those aren't my people. Ooh. So the people that are goofy or, you know, they just want to see positive energy and things like that, they're going to find Those are me. your people. Yeah. And they're going to find me. Yeah. Did you lose a lot of people when throughout your, like, not, not your business journey, but your fitness journey? Um, you mean, like, people in my life? Yeah. we all, I, I love talking about that because that is one big thing. Mm. That when you're progressing in life, mm. there's a lot of people that are going to leave you. There's people that are going to join the, join the tribe because mm. they generally care about you. Mm -hmm. And there's people that are going to join in because they want something from you. And then there's people that are going to join in just because they want to keep you down. Yeah. Don't do that because how you said it's, it's not for sure. Mm -hmm. oh, are you gonna go train? What the eating healthy? What the fuck is yeah. that? Right? I've experienced all three of those things that you just named in the last three years. Mm -hmm. How do you feel though? I feel great now because I found my people. <laughs> <laughs> she sound good, homie. Yeah, but it's it's hard when you're going through that because you're you're only trying to grow and and grow yourself and your business and whatever it is that you're up to. And you're creating. And so it's kind of like, why are these people not supportive of me? Or why? Yeah. And you're like, what What am I doing? You You think it's about yourself, but it's not yourself. It's the, the people. Did you blame yourself at one point? Um, Don't lie now. I did. Okay. Yeah. I, I did. A little bit. I did. Um, <laughs> in my last relationship. That's why I was this kind of like stuttering. <laughs> um, because I grew a lot during that time. Yeah. And so I, I was almost, I almost felt guilty 
because I would feel bad talking about my accomplishments to in my last relationship. And I was like, why am I feeling guilty for talking about getting another client or for winning? Yeah. Why? why like, I felt as if like, like he would feel bad. Like, it's, that I'm like I'm gloating, but it's not. You you have those friends that like right now, like you, uh, Jose. You guys are thriving in your areas, and there's people that are gonna see you thriving, and you you can be around a big friend group, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's gonna get trimmed down as, as time goes, but that big friend group, and you're talking about your accomplishment, a new you got a new client, you just sold out, you know, you're about to do this Spartan race. I see that, <laughs> right? I don't know, you're crazy, father. I, I know. He's I look bad. at it, I just look at it and I'm tired. <laughs> I'm just tired. I'm just I like, know. I can't I'm do tired that. Just watching. <laughs> but you talk about all these accomplishments, and then you have a couple, say there's a group of 10. You have three people that are, hell yeah, dude, you're fucking doing it. Then the other other three that I don't care, that just, okay, cool. Ignore it. It doesn't affect them. Then the other two are just like, are you serious? Like, mm-hmm. this was just bragging. Mm-hmm. But I feel like you have the right to brag. And people take it as bragging because they got nothing to show for themselves. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what you have. As long as we come, we can put a, an idea together or it is celebrate our wins. Mm-hmm. It took a lot to win. Yeah. We're still losing. <laughs> yeah. But along the journey, you're going to win at maybe 10 times, one time out of 10, you may win. But that one time you win has to be celebrated because that one time is probably the difference maker from you quitting yeah. to you keep going. Mm-hmm. So for you... You know, talk like your community of of women of of empowerment. Just the name itself has it empowerment, empower mm-hmm. fitness. Mm-hmm. For you, what's your empowerment? What keeps you going? What keeps you motivated? The days that you don't feel good, the days that you're just tired, you're annoyed, you're man, I'm hurting. Mm-hmm. What keeps you going? There's a few things. Um, the biggest one I would say is like making my parents proud of me because mm. I know they believe in me so much more than I could ever believe in myself. Yeah. So I never want to let them down. And another one is my future self. Ooh. That's very, I think about that all the time. So I know that I have to take the steps right now to get to where I want to be in five years, in 10 years. So that, that's one of the biggest driving forces for me. Like, yeah. You, so who do you look up to? Your future self? Um, I mean, mostly my parents. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I think uh, one of the actors, as he said in one of his speech, he was well, like, my, the person that I look up to is me in 10 years mm-hmm. or me in five years. And then five years happen and then, that person that I look up to is me and five. So that means just progressing. Yeah. We're not the same as when we started. Mm-mm. Were you always confident? From You're, you're business-minded. You said it from the beginning. Mm. But have you always been confident in your shoes? No. Or, like, in my skin, no. Talk no. about that. Yeah. Oh, of course <laughs> you want me to talk about it. <laughs> talk about that. Yeah, because um, it's... Girls, girls and guys, like our thing, we started here with men's mental health, right? And then along the way, we started getting a lot of powerful individuals, women, that would have a great fucking message. Mm-hmm. And now, the you know, everybody that, that shares their message with us and texts us and sends us DMs and talk about their own message, they talk some deep stuff. I'm like, mm-hmm. damn, bro. Yeah. I thought I had it bad. <laughs> I don't. I have my own issues. But some other people have even worse, yeah. and they're just looking for the help. And that's why this platform is where it's at, because we're helping those individuals. Like, people are going to listen to this, whether it's in your own friend group, your own community, or the people that didn't even know you. They're going to listen to your story, and they'll be like, damn, I fuck with Justine. Mm-hmm. That's my girl right there, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. But we're not always confident. Yeah, He knows it. She knows it. Like, sometimes there's days where I'm just like, dude, like, I don't deserve this. I don't feel good. Mm-hmm. Do I really deserve everything that's happening? So what what was the moment, or for you, what was that tough moment that you are just, like, not confident in your own skin? Mm-hmm. I feel like my confidence really changed once I started working out. And I think 
I mean, it shows because now I five years ago I would never think that my entire life would basically be around fitness. Like I would have not. What were you five years ago? Who oh were you five years ago? Oh gosh, completely a different person. I wasn't confident. Confidence is everything. Give us everything. a gem. Everything. Give us a gem. Because confidence is without, like you said, when you when you're having those moments where you feel down and you're not confident, that's when you don't want to do anything or you just want to stay in bed or you just so for it's important to find that thing that makes you feel confident and and continue to do that. Like for me, that was fitness. So I once I started my fitness journey, I never stopped. Like I never went through that moment where I just stopped doing it because I knew that once I did, that confidence was going to go away. And it's different for everybody. For, yeah. for me, it might be fitness. And for another person, it might be drawing. And I just feel like you need to find that thing that makes you feel happy and confident. And once you do, don't stop. And that's what's going to take you. Because if you're not confident, you're not happy. And if you're not happy, then <laughs> you're not working. <laughs> <laughs> you're not doing what's, yeah. what's best fitted for you. Yeah. So a lot, like a lot of people, like, bro, like, you have to at one point stop being your own fucking victim, right, of what you can't do with life because this person doesn't want you to do this or this person is going to get hurt if you do this or your parents are going to be felt let down that you didn't follow a little school or whatever the case is or following your fucking family business. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, every, and we said it before, any parent that has a family business, it's automatic that whatever son or daughter is coming up, you're next in line. Mm -hmm. But maybe I don't want to do that. Yeah. Maybe I want to do something else. Maybe I want to be a fucking scientist. Not me, but. <laughs> well, if you do, you can. No, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I want to. I've said it before. Everybody, this, like, bro, I've said this before. I went to a two year community college. I didn't even graduate. I'm missing one fucking class. <laughs> Pendejo. Why'd you leave? Why'd you stop? Ah, <laughs> oh, man. I, that's not for me. Mm -hmm. I would do it and I would go back. Not for me, but for my for my mom. Mm -hmm. My dad didn't really care about it. <laughs> he's he's as long as I I am I'm, I'm with him. But my mom was like, I know she always wanted to see that for me. Mm -hmm. But it's how you said we found ourselves. I found myself now. Like this this is what we're doing. I love this. Mm -hmm. You can't take me away from this. This is no matter what the repercussions is is of me doing this, I'll accept it. Mm -hmm. Bad or good. Same thing with you. I know if right now someone tells you, yo, you got to quit what you're doing, you're going to look at them like, you're fucking mm -hmm. stupid. Mm -hmm. You're going to hold your ground because I like, know this is what I believe in. Yeah. And sure. it's like you say, like, if you're following your dream, you'll do that shit for free. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, you know at one point it's going to pay off. And once you get to that point, to that, you know, that little self, like, damn, that moment, you're, like, you look back like, now that you you just launched your your what what launch is this what number? Oh my goodness, I don't even know. Me like, either. <laughs> I don't even know. I can't even. I, should I have counted? Should we? Should I don't she know. Have counted? It's been it's been like a year and a half now. Okay. So. So we'll call it. We've been in we'll call it season three. Okay. Sure. <laughs> season three, whatever. Have you taken that step back to like be like, damn, I'm doing this? Yeah. Did you cry? You want me to cry? Nah, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. We're <laughs> so, criers in this show. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so what was, it, what was that conversation with yourself? Not with Jose, not with Danny. What was that conversation with yourself? I think when I had that moment, it was when I got my office. Because I, well, one, now I have something that I need to pay every month. <laughs> so now I'm like, okay, I really can't fail, like. Yeah, now you I can. Need to out well, completely. I mean, you can though. Still, you right? can, but that, I mean, I can't. But it's not an option. No, it's not. It's not. That's the thing. Failure is not an option. Ooh. You can have you can have lessons, yeah. and you can make mistakes, and you can have losses, but not fail. Loss is different than fail. Right? What's the difference? Loss, like I lose my company. The whole thing. I have to go back and start yeah, over. Start right all over. But to failure is different. Everybody fails. What did people say? 
not failures, just lessons. Mm-hmm. I was like, Pitbull. huh? We love Pitbull. You do? Yeah. Jamming out to him? Both. Ooh. Watching his speeches. <laughs> There's a meme and it said, be toxic when, you're, when your girl says she's going out with her homegirls. Be that guy that go, that shows up and pulls her from her fucking uh, eyelashes. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> ah, <laughs> put hashtag toxic vibes. Lashes are expensive. Big expensive? Oh, lash extensions. Sorry, you said lashes. Like strip lashes? Oh. You could just yank those off. <laughs> they do the little... Uh, yeah, and they peel it from the corner. <laughs> Is that weird? That's weird to see, no? For like, I think... I, I think it's weird because he's seen my lashes before. Like when I used to do strip lashes and he's like... Ew, like. <laughs> Leave, you left, don't want to see that. He doesn't want to see that transition. <laughs> left it in the car right there. <laughs> hey, um, um <laughs> is yours? <laughs> on the pillow? On the pillow? <laughs> okay, I'm done. All right. All right. Back to serious. Make sure everybody's subscribing and watching. So we're going to get right into this. In social media, mm-hmm. your life is, in a sense, it has to be re- revolved around social media, right? To grow business, to grow your personal like platform, you have to be around social media. For you, how do you, what's that, those like three things that you would, like someone that's going to get into social media that you would tell them like, hey, this is, if you're going to do this, this is what I think works, Mm -hmm. but be prepared for this. Mm -hmm. So there's a good side and a bad side. Yeah. I would say number one, be authentic, be authentic. Um, number two is share your accomplishments and share your failures because people want to feel and know that you're a person and that they can relate to you. And number three is don't worry about people not liking you. I think say, I, I think those are like the top three things. For, I would say to anybody trying to get into content creation. Um, and what was the second part of the question? What What's one thing they should be prepared for for social media? I think that's because that's what a lot of people don't see. They see you posting your workout videos, your funny videos, you know, uh, you, you know, succeeding in business. But they don't see, you know, the back end of it, mm. of what it takes to be posting consistently, mm. making a good quality of video or real, and they don't see, like, those moments that, you know, you don't get that instant gratification of what you thought social media would give you. Because mm. there's comments, there's whatever, like, what is that bad end of social media that you realized along the way that other people wouldn't wouldn't know just yet? Um, I would say to know that you're not just going to blow up overnight And that you're going to get, in the beginning, especially more people that are hating on you and preying on your downfall than the people that actually support you. Did you feel that? Yeah, I did. When I first started. So you went from personal training to the business owner. Mm -hmm. The personal training aspect, what, what did you feel is the reason why you got into personal training? Because there has, there has to be a background to it. There has, instead of, like, you go from just going to the gym training into actually putting people trusting you with their, their health and their physical abilities mm-hmm. in your hands. So what brings you into that? What, what's, because everybody here, right, we all understand that there's, there's big differences from training to being a trainer. There is completely a lot of differences but there has to be a feeling behind it. Yeah. I coach high school. I don't watch the sport that I coach. <laughs> like, every go on TV, I don't watch that shit. I'm like, nah, no matter. Yeah. Change the channel. <laughs> but my meaning behind the sport, the training, is I, I want to change people's lives. Yeah. I want to help these. Because like, I coach high school girls. I want to help them in a way that not other people are going to help them and be real, be authentic. Mm-hmm. Tell them the downfalls, the upsides to it. No one tells you this. We got into social media and no one told us it was going to be this hard. Yeah. We figured this shit out, right? But the same thing with training. No one tells you the beauty. Everybody tells you the beauty of it, but no one tells you the back end of it. Yeah. Like, 
Hey, you're going to be a personal trainer. You're going to succeed and do this. But no one's going to tell you you might not have a client. Yeah. <laughs> Your rent is due, but. The rent is always due. <laughs> That's for sure. First That's one the, thing that never changes. First of the month, motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> start drinking uh, water and sopa maruchan. <laughs> <laughs> I still Good. eat it. Don't Good laugh. I, do. I, I love I love top ramen. Just today in the morning. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Dude, jamon and just jamon and a quesadilla. <laughs> the what? <laughs> Oh, man. Um, Bomb. I'm about to go eat now. <laughs> so, yeah, what what was that transition? For everybody listening that wants to transition, like, yeah. tell, like you got to let us know what's that. We need to know the bad side of this mm-hmm. or the hard part of it. Yeah. So, for me, okay, so I was training. I wasn't training, sorry. So, I was working at 24-Hour Fitness in sales. And I got to see the trainers there and how they handled their clients. And actually, let's go back a little bit further. So before I even worked at a corporate gym, I was overweight. And I told myself I needed to lose weight. So I started working out. And then my friends, when I first started working out, I would work out alone. And then my friends started noticing that I was losing weight and I was getting into shape. And then two of my friends, they were like, I'm going to start coming to the gym with you. Can you train me? And I was like, yeah, let's go. Like, to me, I'm just like, I'm just going to work out with them, whatever. So when we got, we would go to the gym. They would go with me every day. We'd go like five times a week to Planet Fitness. And I would, they made me put them through workout because they didn't know what to do at all. Yeah. So they would see me do something. They're like, I don't know. How, I don't know how to do that. Can like, can you show me? So I would literally drag them to the gym five times a week and we'd work out and I would put them through a workout. And I did that for like a year. And I was like, these girls got to start paying me for this. I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, if you're listening, if you're listening, you're getting the bill right now. Uh, We're yeah. going to send you the Zell the request. Invoice. The Zell request right now. Hey, um, uh, sorry, but. I know. So. I think that gave me a taste of what, because then I saw their confidence started growing, and then they started going to the gym without me, and I was like, hold on. (laughs) Now you're not even going to invite me? You're not going to invite me? I'll tell you everything you know. I'm just kidding. But, so I saw what I was able to do for my friends. For them, yeah. And the confidence that, you know, they gained, and I... That's what really inspired me. So then I started working at 24 Hour Fitness, and I... Really was just I was in sales, but I was studying the trainers. Ooh. Yeah, she was working behind yeah. the scenes. I was the one giving them the clients because <laughs> I was uh, all yeah, the packages. Yeah, yeah you're like, hold on, what you doing? <laughs> She's like, you want to sign up? I'm gonna set you up with my personal tra- yeah. one of our top trainers. Of the- but here's my number, so in the future, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, at that if, point, if, I didn't. I didn't want to be a if trainer. If that doesn't work out, twenty four hour fitness, don't don't come for me. <laughs> just kidding. No, some people that work there, uh, no shots. So. No, some- so you motherfuckers. then after like after like a year, that's when I left 24 Hour Fitness and I became an independent trainer. But it is very different because at 24 Hour Fitness, a corporate gym, you're getting guaranteed income no matter what. Um, then when you go independent, it's all on you. And even going to a gym where now it's not corporate and you're getting an hourly, but you're going to a gym that's private and you're an independent contractor, now you have rent. So now not only are you not getting paid hourly, but you have to pay rent and you have to find your clients. And yeah, it's easy to paint a picture when you go there like, okay, I'm going to get you all these clients and you're going to be so good and you're going to make $10,000 a month. But then once you're there, you're like, where's my $10,000? And I have to pay rent? Yeah. So it is it is very different, but it's all about creating that now, yeah, it's all on you, but the the I'm thinking of a word, the the options are like endless. Like you can just continue, but you can also fail. So you have to again back to taking a risk on yourself, betting on yourself, yourself. but you can't just if someone tells you this is what you're going to get, it's not just what you're going to get. You have to be willing to put in the work to get to that point. Because they're not going to give you the $10,000 a month, 
but they're going to take some. <laughs> they're going to get their $10,000. They're going to get theirs, yeah. yeah but yeah. it's up to you if you want to eat. You got you have to find your clients at you the end of the day. You got to grind that motherfucker. So, cuz I do get I do get a lot of people that ask me like how do you how do you get started? So, how do you build your clientele? Social media. Yeah, for me, it was social media. Um getting yeah. that presence, your presence out there. Um it's crazy because I feel like I kind of manifested it without even knowing because I started a fitness page before the thought of even becoming a personal trainer came about. Yeah. And so by the time I became, I was thinking about becoming a personal trainer, I had some type of a community, a thousand followers, which it's a lot, but I mean. Now where we're just, at is. It's not. It's yeah. nothing. So, but you have to, I think, especially like you said, right now, where we're at, like social media is everything. Yeah, it's it's a it's a area that's very impacted. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to be a personal trainer. Everybody wants to be a personal trainer with the business. And how we said in transitioning in, there's a difference between being a personal trainer, uh, independent contractor, to being a completely business owner, mm-hmm. being business minded. Yeah, you're business minded on the personal contractor because you need to have clients. Make sure you pay your rent, make sure you structure your training for your clients and blah, blah, blah. But going into business, it's two different set, set of things. Mm-hmm. We love social media. We love podcasting. But when you get into the business aspect, it's two different things. Oh, yeah. It's a business. That means we're going to lose yeah. a lot more than we win. Yeah. There's an, so what was, what's that difference for everybody wondering between being a personal trainer to being a business owner? Being a business owner, you have to take a risk. So you're investing in something that potentially may not come back to you. So when I first started, I started with $2,000, but that's scary. Cause that's a lot of money. That is. So wow. you, you, you invest and that's not guaranteed to come back to me versus when you're a personal trainer, independent contractor, the money that you make, that's yours. You're not, you're not taking a risk as far as investing money into something that may not come back to you. When you're a business owner, you're constantly taking risks. And then once you, you, I have a launch, you have a launch, you got to go bigger the next time. It's constantly bigger. You're taking bigger risks and bigger potential loss yeah. each time. So that's scary. Every time I get scared. <laughs> I get, I get anxiety <laughs> every time because I'm thinking about it. That's so funny. Because I, because I do. I, Jose sees it a lot. Like every launch, I I get overwhelmed because it's like, what what if I don't sell anything? So what if what do your public see something, but what does your public doesn't see on the back end of this? Uh, so in the back end of Justine, the back end of the owner of Empower Fitness, what do people don't see? So one, I as a business owner, I am every single position. So I'm the social media manager. I'm the the we, face of the brand. I'm the one who does the packing of the orders. I'm the one who counts inventory. I'm the one who designs. Customer buys, service, yeah, HR. Everything, everything. I'm the one who fills the orders, everything. And that comes with a lot of stress, but it's, it's good stress, of course, because that means that I have something to be stressed about and that we're growing. But that's something that definitely people don't get to see is the amount of work that it takes to run a business and grow a business. I am constantly trying to grow. I'm not, I don't, I don't want to just be comfortable. So with that comes a lot of stress. So what gets invested besides the money? Time. um, Giving up. Giving up free time, giving up time with your loved ones, working even when you're home and you leave the office and just constantly. There's always something to be done. Literally, there's always something. And even guilt. Because as a business owner also, and you're trying to grow, you feel guilty of like, why am I out here doing this when I should be doing this for my business? Why am I going out to a party when I should be doing this for my business? And so you have to find that balance also 
because you also don't want to lose your personal life, but you do need to sacrifice. So I think it's also about finding that happy medium where like, okay, I feel satisfied and I'm happy and I'm still enjoying like my loved ones, but I'm also not just going out every weekend partying and, you know, not making the most of my... Have you sacrificed a lot? Yeah, I have, for sure. What's the biggest thing that you sacrificed? Free time. Talk about the free time because I don't think a lot of people, a lot of people that want to get into social media, business, entrepreneurship, like no one understands the back end of it. Mm-hmm. Everybody sees the 10, 20 second clip, but no one sees how much time you put into that 10, 20 second clip. Yeah. No one sees how many hours of sleep you didn't get, how many hours of work that you had to be thinking and doing. Because mm-hmm. you post a video and you're already thinking about, What's going, what's going to happen next? You're already thinking about, oh, I should do this content. Wait, we need to do this. Wait, mm-hmm. like, I call this motherfucker on this side of the camera. Sorry, mm-hmm. Dylan. <laughs> call him, like, three times a day. Hey, I think we should do this this time. Yeah. Your brain's I, constantly going. Constantly. I don't sleep, bro. I got sleep apnea like there's no tomorrow. We don't <laughs> sleep. <laughs> like, I we, feel guilty for sleeping. Yeah. But I, may, I make myself sleep, but. I feel guilty uh, for even you sleeping. Sleep you're like, oh, shit, I gotta do this. Yeah. yeah. like, you go. Or your you, mind is going, and you feel yeah. bad for, like, you like you have no, to. you sleep because you don't rest. Yeah. 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 Kevin Gates even said it. He's like, have you ever gone to sleep and woke up just tired? Yeah. I'm like, every day of my life. You don't life. get in a deep sleep because you your mind yeah. is still. Yeah, like, you wake yeah. up, and it's it's that thr- it's that drive, though. It, yeah. It's that thing that's in you. It wasn't, it wasn't just, like, given to you. It was, you literally built it. <laughs> Right, like to wake up, want to be motivated. We're not always motivated, but we're purposeful. Mm -hmm. We wake up and we're like, I need to do this. There's no option in this no more. Mm -hmm. Right, like you said, there's no giving up. We talk about this all the time. Like there is no going back. If we stop, it doesn't affect nobody else. If you if you were to stop in power fitness, personal training, all that, it doesn't affect everybody. Mm -hmm. Oh man, you had a great run. Yeah, I'm gonna hit you like what the. I'm now depressed because what did I do for so long and I gave it up just like that. Yeah. So when someone tells me, yo, you got to get, no, bro, got no option. Yeah. I'm going to fight for my dream. I'm going to fight for what I want. And whatever comes out with it, it's okay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take that hit. Yeah, it's not going to be easy. What was the biggest loss that you've taken in life? Um, I mean, honestly, I haven't really... I don't want to say I haven't experienced like a loss. So take but I so just, take the loss in it could be anything with family, physical, or even yourself mm-hmm. losing yourself. Because mm-hmm. when you lose yourself, that is like a personal death. Mm-hmm. That man to get out of it, no one understands how much fight you got to give to just climb back and mm-hmm. not be yourself again, but to be somebody new. Yeah. I think for me, it's it's more so like not. I'm still trying to figure out how to balance everything. Talk about balance. So, so like, my day starts at four forty-five a.m. every day. I wake up. I have a, I have clients at six a.m. <laughs> and then I work for a few hours. I have another client, and then after that, I'm full like content creation and then empower fitness. Like, and I'm always I'm always just thinking about like, okay, well, I need. Like, I need to do this for Empowered Fitness, but I have to do this for my personal account and the content creation that I have to do also for that. Yeah. And it's just, like, the the balance is the hardest. The so what hardest is the balance? Thing. What is the balance? Yeah, what's balance? It's making time for everything that I put on my plate, but also making time for me. I'm going to get into a... Same question, just a little deeper. You have your business. Mm-hmm. You have your your other business. Right? You still kind of come. But then you also got a relationship. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> to stay happy, to make sure everybody in all those areas stays happy. Where is the balance? Because uh, shout out uh, FRT Rehab, right? <laughs> Over here talking about teeter-totters. Mm-hmm. You're going to do this, then this is going to come down. You're going to balance this, put attention to this, but then this side comes down. So technically, I don't believe in balance. I want to believe in a balance, 
But there's things that, you know what, at the same time, I can't because we're still growing. We're still doing this. We got to be out and about because we need to interact. We need to be out there, come to create. Mm-hmm. I think someone told me, like, yo, like, you go out every day. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, bro, you're posting every day. I'm like, well, I do that shit in a day. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, we record a whole day, and I just spread it out. Mm-hmm. Okay, I thought it was, nah, fool, what the fuck? I can't go out every day. for you. Yeah, <laughs> dude, it's benders. It's a job. We go on, uh, we go on bad benders. <laughs> Today, probably like 2, 3, 4 in the morning. <laughs> Not oh too my bad. goodness. Yeah, not too But it's him. Yeah. He's young. Oh, okay. 23 years old. I got to. blaming it on you. Yeah, I have to. Yeah. I have to. Everybody watching, it's on Dylan. <laughs> but it's balance. Yeah. Balancing relationship, business, personal. Mm-hmm. Where does that go? How does that happen? I think the number one thing, like, in the relationship is to find a partner who is understanding of what you do. So. Jose is very, like, actually, he would rather me work and be like, okay, we don't have to, like, we don't have to go to dinner tonight or something because you need to get this done. Like, this needs to get done. So having that type of partner versus somebody who is the opposite and more like, well, like, just not not pushing you to be your best self, that makes a huge difference. Your partner is, the person that you choose to be your partner is very crucial to your success and your growth. Because it can make or break your growth. I love you, dude. Like that? Your yeah. partner? Yeah, that's my partner. <laughs> that's my camote. <laughs> <laughs> that's my camote. Oh, shit. I'm just kidding. Um, no, it's, it's true. Because you, you mentioned earlier that you were scared to talk about your triumphs. Mm-hmm. But then you meet someone like you that's just as driven as you are. And now you're both thriving. And now you guys are both talking about your triumphs. You know, pushing each other. Yo, why you stay home? Go work. Mm-hmm. Go be better. Go do something. Because I think if for someone that has time 24-7 out of the, out of the week, then what are you doing? Mm-hmm. If, you're, if you can be together at all times of the day, all day, every day, after work, go, go with them and spend time. Like, bro, okay, so what are you working on? Yeah. You don't want to be 50, 30, 40, 30, whatever age, and be like, damn, I should have started. Mm-hmm. I should have started back then. That's the thing. Like, you started now. Yeah. Are you glad you started at the time you started? Yeah, I am. I, I think everything that I went through led me to where I am today. And I also think um, it's also important to have, like, a balance in that relationship also. Yeah. Because if you're both the type of people that are just always go, 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 and, like, business, business, business all the time, then that relationship won't work either because then there's no time that you're putting and investing into the, your relationship. So I think, again, balance. So who, trying to find that balance is everything. Who takes, this, who takes the step back? Who takes the step back? Yeah. You or him? In what? Step back in? Like, like in, hey, like, we need to Oh, me. To. For sure. Yeah. He's the one that's like business, business, business. And I'm like, okay, wait. We've been doing this for X amount of days. Like, can we have, can we need to do something because then... We lose, we lose our, like, we get a disconnect. But I think it doesn't, it, it could be one time a week. Like, it doesn't have to be every day, you know? It's so just important. To what's the quality of the relationship then? Like, qualities that you need to have in order to, like, make it, like, you, you explain about being supportive, mm-hmm. right? You explain, you have to be driven. Mm-hmm. Is communication, is motivation. Yep. Does that have to play into a part with everything, like, the type of person you are? 100 percent yes big communicator yes red flags red flags what do you have red flags i mean i feel like i feel like we all have like a red flag in (laughs) us i'm a leo (laughs) that's not a red flag though scorpio oh goodness you got a personality on you (laughs) oh yeah low key (laughs) not gonna lie uh yeah my best friend is a scorpio i'm not gonna lie yeah i'm not gonna lie all my scorpios we we say we're bad yeah but we're really bad. <laughs> oh, no. I, it's el carácter, like personality wise, how you said it, it, it's strong. Yeah. But to me, it's like when I want something, I'm gonna go and get it. Yeah, no matter what it is. Yeah. And if it doesn't work out, I'm I'm good to let go. Mm-hmm. It's gonna affect me, but I'm not gonna show you that it affects me. I'm just gonna go and walk away mm-hmm. and I gotta move on to the next. It it's happened here. Mm-hmm. We are here sitting again at the platform we're sitting because there was things and the obstacles that we faced and we chose to let them be mm-hmm. 
because we couldn't control them. Yeah. We couldn't control other people's aspects. We couldn't control other people's actions. We can only control ourselves. Yeah. Can't be mad at you. You're going to be mad at yourself and hate yourself. Mm-hmm. I got to be happy with myself at one point. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you this question. What do you value that other people don't value? I would say humility. So allowing yourself to feel like if you made a mistake, like acknowledge your mistake and things like that. Like a lot of people always just want to be right or they don't want to admit that they've made a mistake. And that's something that I stay true to. That's good. What was the best piece of advice that you've, you've received? To never give up on myself. It's it's simple, but it's that's effective. what that's what my dad told me. It's just never like if you want to do something, do not you can't like don't give up. Just do whatever you have to do to make sure it gets done. What was the worst piece of advice you received? Oh, um, God damn. It. Oh gosh, I, I really God damn. I'm stuck right now. <laughs> we need a shot, huh? We need a shot. I uh, no no no. I don't need a shot. That's good. I can't think. <laughs> like, there's a lot of. I think the worst piece of advice can sound good at the moment, but also be really bad. Yeah. You know that what's I think one piece of advice, worst piece of advice that I've gotten is like, yo, just accept it. Mm. I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. Fuck no, I don't. I'm not gonna accept it. Yeah. I'm gonna understand it if it's if I can't if I can't control it, I'll understand it. Mm. I'm not gonna accept it though. And I take it in the sense where I've lost a lot of things, a lot of people. I didn't want to accept it, but it's just the way shit goes. Mm. I understand, but yeah, I got to move. Or yeah, you, um, you don't have to keep yourself in a situation where you don't want to be. Yeah, I don't want to sit in the table where I, I'm not appreciated. Yeah, I'm not loved. I'm That's not. Oh, man, it's insane. Mm. But now, like, we just don't give a shit. Yeah. Like, we care. But <laughs> we just don't give yeah, a shit. You have to just be yourself. Yeah, like, bro, I love walking in with confidence. Mm-hmm. I love walking in with people that are just as confident and are very, like, supportive. And, and they're going to, like, if you need help, they're going to first ones, yo, what, 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 what do we need to do? Mm-hmm. I love being in that type of room. Not, hey, bro, you want to go get drunk this weekend? You want to go buy a bottle at the club? Yeah. 24-pack <laughs> of beer for $200? I what? hate the club. Oh, my gosh. We hate the club. Jesus. We hate the club. Whoever invented the club, I just... I mean, but they're phases, right? Yeah, I guess. Did you go through phases? No, I never went through the party phase, ever. Never. (laughs) You're going to go through it later. Nah, I don't think so. (laughs) You know what, today... Like, I've been to the club. Like, you know, I've been to the club a a few times. But it's not But I never once have, like, been like, damn, this is lit. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, if after a few drinks, yeah, <laughs> after a few drinks, but like, I, I'm never the type of person that's like, let's go to the bar or let's go to the club, like yeah. ever. Let's go to a nice little brunch spot talk. Br- brunch is different. Mimosas. Brunch is different. <laughs> Lit off mimosas. Uh, <laughs> no, I like breakfast. That's why brunch has like such good. Well, depending on where you go, we don't have to get into that. But why? Where <laughs> you want to talk about brunch versus the club? <laughs> I feel like there's something there. Why, why are we going to no. talk about this? Oh, no, I'm just saying. I want brunch because of mimosas. Okay. And if they say bottomless mimosas, barrio verga. Oh, <laughs> gosh. Were you there for mimosas breakfast? Mimosas hit different. Like, uh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Jose's Champagne carrying you? drunk is different. No, I've never, I've never gotten, I don't think I've gotten, like, I'm like, did I? I don't think I've ever gotten drunk off of champagne or mimosas. It's for like a moment. I, I like I, I like being sh- like I like champagne better than hard alcohol. Pinky's up, baby. Yeah. All day. Brunch. Oh. And then you get the whole day to recover. <laughs> After the nap. Yeah. After the power oh, nap. Yeah, you have to go home. You gotta go on the power nap. Yeah. So remember, if you tune in this long, I'm I don't want to remind you guys so often, but you gotta subscribe, share the podcast, and follow all the platforms. But the biggest thing for us to end on is losses. We've lost people throughout our journey. I'm not going to pretend here that everybody that we started with, we kept around. Because not everybody is supposed to be in your circle the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Right? Not everybody's going to be a part of your movement for the rest of your life. Because 
not everybody is just meant for this, right? Not everybody's meant to be going and priorities and prioritize this movement. Maybe it doesn't mean that much to them. Maybe what we're going, maybe it outgrew them, right? They want to be stuck in their own time. Cool. Everybody has their own timeline. I just know our timeline here is a little bit faster paced. Mm -hmm. You had a, did you have to, with everything you're going on and you're moving in, did you have to deal with losing people, bringing your circle tight? Because our circle is one, two, three, probably like less than 10 people. Mm -hmm. Between we've had, we, you started over like 10 people. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, it's us that we come every weekend. Mm -hmm. And I'm good with it. Yeah. I'm good with trusting the right people. Yeah. I love to be around a lot of people, mm -hmm. but in people to confine with, that's where I find my value. Yeah. For you, how did that work out? I, I definitely experienced loss like, within my small circle. Um, What's your circle at now? Oh, man. Where did it start and where is it at now? Started, I thought, I thought I had a lot of friends. Me too. But I didn't. So uh, I don't even want to say it started with, but I thought I had at least 10 girls that were like solid. Like I could. Well, rock on. Yeah. Putazo that we no. needed to. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> Jumping now, off the table. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. Um, but along the way, like I lost the closest friend to me along the way and yeah. that really that really that that I went through so much internally when I went through that experience because I was almost like why like wh I just didn't understand and that was the first time I experienced um someone I want to say like envy it hits of, different huh? yeah oh yeah it hurt, oh, yeah. It hurt really bad and I'm like why am I hurting over over this like but it's because you you cared about s someone yeah and you realize that that person that you thought was your best friend or your boyfriend or whoever it is they really didn't have the best intentions for you and when that happens it hurts but you have to just remember that during your growing process you're going to lose people and that's okay. And it's not about you. That was my biggest thing. I, I kept making it about me. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did I, what did I do for like, why are they not happy for me? And yeah. yeah. And that was the biggest thing. And I, I had to start paying attention moving forward with girls that I started hanging out with or talking to. Like I looked for those red flags after that first friendship that yeah. I lost uh, because of that, because they weren't happy for me moving forward. That made me, I have a guard up now. Anybody that comes into my life, I have a guard up and I'm like, what do they really want for me? Do they want me to succeed? Do they want to just be around me? Do they just want, yeah. I don't know. Like, what do they, do they, I think our first question is what do they want? What do they want to take from me? Yeah. What do they you want know, from me? Yeah. Where we're sitting at now, you know, you can talk about our platform. You can talk about our social media. You can talk about our TikTok. A lot of people, and I, and I'm very blunt to say this, and I hate, I don't, I don't even hate it. I love throwing little low blows here and there mm -hmm. because they know who they are. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like people just want to be around to get shouted out, to be on your repost, yeah. to be on your tag, to be in that scenario. Oh yeah. And it's cool. You can, bro. Maybe that time you got lucky, but I know the intentions, and I'm not afraid to let you go mm -hmm. because what you're talking about, I went through it, and now mm -hmm. for me, it's like now I'm gonna speak my mind. I don't care what you have to say. I don't care what you think of me now. I know what I invested in. I know who I am. Yep. If you don't like it, then so be it. Move on your way. Yeah. Take off. And that's integrity also and like who you are in relationships. Yeah. Like we talk about it in our circle, right? In order for you to in invade our circle, you need to bring value. Mm -hmm. You don't need to bring money. You don't need to bring possession. I just need you to come with the right energy. How can I grow from you being in my life? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like what are you providing? Hey, I'm providing this. I'm like it's just support. Yeah. Like if I'm fucking crying and and I need somebody and I can call you and I can trust you enough to call you, mm -hmm. and you're not gonna run with that to somebody else. Hey, dude, this was crying. To me, that oh, never again in my life are you allowed. Yeah. It's hard for some people to let go, yeah. and it's okay. You're gonna realize it. Maybe not now, but maybe you're gonna have your final straw. And you're gonna be like, damn, bro, I should have let this person go a long time ago. 
the closest motherfucker to me is the one that hurt me the most. Mm -hmm. It could be your relationship. It could be your best friend. It could be whoever, your family. The closest motherfuckers, sorry, let me rephrase this. Your closest people can be the ones that hurt you the most. Oh, yeah. And it's up to you to realize it sooner than later, to let them go, let that person go, so you can finally be at peace. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in peace? Yeah. What's peace to you? Just feeling content and not really, it sounds kind of bad, but like just not caring about what anybody else thinks or wants Thanks. for you. That's it. Just worrying about what it is. What do I want for myself? What do I see for myself? And that's it. And yeah. as you are on your path, you're going to find people that aren't, they aren't on that same path as you, or they don't want you to be doing these certain things. And those are the people that you have to stay away from, like, completely. Because those are the ones that are going to try to deter you from your yeah. path. Like, uh, one thing I did want to bring up on, on, on this pod, right, we're almost at the end, um, is where I'm at in life. You know, I want to ask you this question, like, and before I, I ask you, like, for me, where I'm at in life, like, I just want peace. Mm -hmm. I just want happiness. I, I literally want everybody around me to win, mm -hmm. but I also want everybody around, like, around me to have those in great intentions, those good intentions. But I'm into the point where I am tired, but I am ready for whatever comes, mm -hmm. right? I'm ready for whatever life, life's ups and downs, the roller coaster we're about to get into. I am ready, but I'm in that point in my life where I'm like, yo, I want peace. Mm -hmm. I want to be happy. I want to, there's going to be stressors, but I want to be able to like, yo, I'm good, bro, no matter what. Yeah. The world is burning down and I'm still good because I'm good with myself. You, in this point of your life, what do you want? I would say growth, just because, especially being in your late 20s, the late 20s are so crucial to your growth and where you'll be in your 30s yeah. that I only want things, people around me that are going to contribute to my growth and that I can contribute to theirs. Yeah. You think you have I, time? I, the little time. That's why I only want people that are going to yeah. contribute to my growth and vice versa because you only have, your time is so valuable. The time to me is the most valuable Thing that someone can possess and and offer to someone else so if I give you my time that tells you a lot because I don't just give anybody my time and you yeah. shouldn't give anybody your time because you can never get that back and you can spend that working on whatever it is that you want to work on so if you feel that there's someone in your life that doesn't value your time then that's a no that's a no -go. they gotta go yeah they gotta go they gotta they got to go and there's no fucking return, dog. Yeah, like, that's it. No, you have to value time. Uh, it's because people think that they can leave you and come back whenever they want. Yeah. Nah, hell nah, motherfucker. Like, I'm so not that works. same. I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm not going to be the same person that you that I am when you than when you left me. Yeah. I'm going to be a completely different person. And you don't have access to the new me now. You fucked up already. <laughs> <laughs> La cagaste, man. I like that. I like that. You don't like getting too emotional, do you? No. I noticed. I sensed it. <laughs> Do you feel that's a vulnerability? It is. You're scared of that vulnerability? I'm not scared of it. I just don't give that to everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm not. But the people that I am vulnerable with, I will give everything to. The last time you were vulnerable, what happened? Not ex you don't got to get into details, mm -hmm. but what was going on through your heart, through your head, your emotion, your head, like what happened? Um. Just knowing that, like, having to having to give up something now for knowing that it's going to benefit me in the future. Because yeah. that's something that requires vulnerability and trust. Is trust is giving up something now for something in the future that will be beneficial. Trust is a motherfucker. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. it's, it's played around too much, yeah. unfortunately. Unfortunately. But... The people that we sit with, I know we can trust them with our life, right? Mm -hmm. um, so with you, for you, if you were talking to a young Justine, mm -hmm. one led, mm -hmm. when you weren't the confident one, mm -hmm. 
when you weren't the best looking one, when you weren't the entrepreneur one, what can you tell that young that young Justine now? I would just say don't let anybody tell you that you can't do something. Don't let anybody tell you that you shouldn't do something. And don't let anybody tell you what will make you happy because nobody knows that but you at the end of the day. Damn. And then the last question, and because this two episodes ago we asked this and it went really good. You're, you said your parents are very supportive, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. They support you in everything you do and, and all that. Mm-hmm. If they're going to listen into this, what would you tell them? Um, they will listen to it because yeah. <laughs> they they're supportive. <laughs> so what would you tell them? Uh, just, I'm not I would just thank them, which I do all the time, but for never trying to tell me for always thank you for always supporting everything that I've wanted to do and always supporting whether that was literally anything like oh my gosh like literally any type of support I've ever needed from my parents like they've done that for me and they've always believed in me and I've known people close to me that like they didn't have that support from their parents and it can be so hard and I've never I'm so blessed that I've never had to feel that from my parents not being supportive. Yeah. So that's, I know that even though to me it's normal, I know it's not. Yeah. And so that's made, I know, such a difference in who I am today because of what they have instilled in me and to b- believe in myself. I like that for you. <laughs> that was good. That was good. You know, I got to shout out your parents because... Without our parents, we wouldn't be who we are. Mm -hmm. Whether it was a good experience with your parents or bad experience with your parents, you have to understand that you have that ultimate choice of what you want to be in life. You want to be a better parent? You can be a better parent. You want to be a better child? You you could be a better child. You want to be successful? You can be successful. If you want to be average, that's your choice. It's nobody else's. It's only yours, right? That's what a lot of people after this podcast is going to understand that. Everybody has a choice, whatever it may be. It doesn't matter. You want to be a doctor, be a doctor. You want to be a personal trainer, be a personal trainer. You want to be a a fucking scientist, be a fucking scientist. You're going to say scientist. (laughs) I don't know why. I don't know why. (laughs) What was the one that we always watched in, uh, like, elementary? Oh, Oh, Bill Nye, the science guy. (laughs) Bill, Bill, Bill. Yes. On the rainy days. Those are the best days. (laughs) Those were the best. Oh, Bill Nye, the science guy. Bill, Bill, Bill. Bill. Hey, that was partying with some fucking females, too. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking scientists, dog. He is a G. He was like, let me. Shout out to Bill Nye. Yeah, he was like, let me. Let me give you the equation for me and you. Oh. (laughs) Dylan, I got you. (laughs) Dylan, we got to take a toast, big guy. We got to take a toast, Dylan. If if you're watching this at 7 in the morning, don't drink. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Drink coffee. Yeah. Or oranges. I love coffee. Or champagne. You're a coffee. You're a coffee. You're a coffee, you're a coffee I love coffee. What about energy drinks? Oh, I love energy Wait, drinks more. Bef- while Dylan is doing this, dude, you're spon- you're sponsored by Inaka, right? Yes. Dude, yeah. I'm gonna oh. really I quick, really quick. How did that happen? How did that transpire? Like, so even just getting getting brand sponsorships in general, like. You do not want to take the first brand that reaches out to you. Do not just partner with a brand because they want to partner with you. You have to, whatever brand you love to wear, like I love wearing Anaka. So I would would tag them in every single story, every post. I would tag the owner. I would tag his his, um, assistant. I would tag anybody that I knew worked in his circle. I tagged them in my posts. And then I started even taking it further. Once they would respond and they'd put like fire emoji or like my photo or my picture, I'd be like, oh, so I got their attention. And then I started shouting them out in my reels. I'd be like, y'all better sponsor me. (laughs) And I did that. I did that a few times and I got sponsored. But it really just comes back to staying true to what you actually like 
And yeah. then, because even if you, you can randomly get sponsored by a brand, but then people are going to be like, she's sponsored by, what? I've never seen, who, the who fuck are is they that? one? And yeah. I've never even seen her wear them before. It's because Inaka, so Inaka right now is fucking powerful. It's, Inaka is. It's one, it's fucking great. Mm -hmm. If you ever have a 2X shirt, let me know. I got, uh, <laughs> I got to wear it. <laughs> community. <laughs> what, what, Dylan? You're big. Don't judge yeah. my size, bro. <laughs> I love eating my Donalds. Anaka, I feel like, has blown up so much also because Anaka is all about community. Yeah. Oh, facts. my goodness. They have a Discord chat. I've never, I don't, now I do, but yeah. I hadn't seen anyone start a Discord chat. Shali is up in that Discord, too. Shit. And they're just, yeah, they, they, they have, like, a whole community. They, they, they're deep. They're only, they're going to, oh, but, my gosh. But congr started. congratulations to that because in order, I always think when you get sponsored by these these people, these brands, this movement that everybody watches, in order for you to even land there, mm -hmm. you did something correctly together. Yeah. Like, I, I assumed, like, even before we, we set up the podcast, shout out Dre, South Made Rancho. That's where, mm -hmm. and like, I seen you again. I was hey, like, <laughs> I was like, yo, all right, this is going to happen. Yeah. And um, I started, and I was like, sounds really creepy. I was like, I already seen your stuff from back then. Like, mm -hmm. Your training, your videos, your TikToks. You. And then I seen a knock and I was like, damn, <laughs> she fucking doing it, dog. Like, that's crazy. Like, everybody everybody wears a shirt and they want to get, they one day wish to get sponsored. You actually did the damn thing, mm. right? So you got to give yourself the flowers. We want to give you, give you those flowers that everything you are doing is paying off in a sense that everybody that you have watching you is inspired is motivated and one day either wants to be like you or something near you because you are powerful. If you haven't noticed, you are powerful in your movement. You are powerful in everything you're doing because you didn't, you didn't just talk about it. You really acted upon it and you didn't let that be a choice. You didn't give up. You could have gave up. Like, let's be honest. You could have gave up in all this. You, you wouldn't have had so many drops you wouldn't have been sponsored. You wouldn't be in the position you are now if you would have gave up. Mm. Everything can go wrong. And probably things have gone wrong. Mm. But you never you never let that affect you in a way where you're like, I'm just sitting in my room and I'm not going to do nothing no more. Mm -hmm. I'm done. You said, fuck that. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do something. So I want to tell you personally, like, you are a big motivation to all those women that want to have that type of power mm -hmm. that you have. They want to feel empowered. Mm -hmm. They want to feel confident. They want to feel good. They want to feel happy. And by them seeing you, I know what's happening. So I want to give you those flowers really quick, you know? Thank you. Damn. Stop, because I have a lump in my throat. I almost made you cry. Damn, didn't work out. But something you could tell the people that are watching you that, you yeah. know, a little bit of motivation. A quote that you live yeah. by, you know, something you always remember. I know I have a huge community of girls. So my my thing would just be always, I, I already said it once in this podcast, but always bet on yourself and don't let anybody around you dictate what you believe you can accomplish. If you want something, you really can have it. Like you really can. But don't let anybody tell you that you can't. That's, that's like, number one. I believe in all of you guys. And like I said, I have so many conversations with my community every day. So I know everybody, and we all have our own bullshit that we go through every day. But at the end of the day, nobody is going to get you where you want to be but yourself. So just never give up on yourself. That's it. I like that, bro. That, if you're watching, if you have your coffee, if you got your drink in your hand, Cheers. damn, didn't you wild in? Take a toast. <laughs> Happy Dash. Happy Dad, right. sponsor the podcast. Come on, sponsor the podcast, big guys. We're here. It's us everybody here, all the all the followers. 